My favorite thing about craft challenges is that they can send you off in unexpected directions. Take this month's guild build on the Tabletop Crafters Guild. This month's theme was floating terrain. Do I need floating terrain? No. Do I want to build some? Heck yes. With the re-release of Dragonlands being announced, I first thought to make something in the style of a flying citadel, a wizard's tower floating on a chunk of rock. In the end, I didn't go in this direction, for reasons that will be clear later. To hold it up, I wanted to use something a bit more visually interesting than a flying base. I had no idea what that would be at this point, but I decided to start building anyway, and figure it out later. To make the floating island, I scrunched up some aluminum foil. This is not a technique I use very often, and the guild build is as good an excuse as any to experiment. The foil will form the substructure of the island. Next, I lightly glued some bits of bark to it. These would be the exposed rocks. You don't need to glue these very securely, just enough that they won't move around much. To make everything solid, I mixed up some bootleg sculpt mold and slumped it on. This is just pulp from toilet paper mixed with polyfiller and water. If you're really committed to zero waste, feel free to recycle your own toilet paper, but I just used some flesh of the roll. Once this layer was on, I added chunks of cork for smaller rocks. Just push them in, they'll hold fine once this sets. Now, if you want to smooth this out, you can leave this to set for a while and smooth it a little with a wet finger. But I didn't need to do that here, since uh, I would cover this up with texture later. Instead, I just let it cure, and then covered the top with more polyfiller. To make a base, I just built up a piece of MDF with more sculpta mold and a rock I made from XPS foam. By this point, I had decided that the stand would be a chain anchoring the island to the rock on the base. I figured that as long as the chain had some slack to it, it would look like the island was floating and dragging the chain, rather than being supported by it. I had an old piece of jewelry chain which I sewed in 5 minute epoxy and hung up to dry, coiling part of it so it would form a bit of a base. I left the far end of the chain clear so that it would still flex so I could connect it to the rock and left this to cure for 24 hours. 5 minute epoxy usually sets hard in a few minutes but it will take about a day to reach its full strength. Once set, I made a hole in the bottom of the island and tested it out. It looked like the chain could take the weight, so I went on with the next step. After undercoating the pieces in grey and white, I painted the rocks using several washes. The blue may have been a bit too strong as it overpowered the others, but I quite liked the result, even if I was going for something more grey. Next, dirt. I wasn't entirely happy with the way I was doing dry earth, so I wanted to try something different. This time I put down a layer of PVA and sprinkled dirt all over it. As usual, I soaked this with some diluted surgical spirit and more diluted PVA to seal it in. Couple of layers of this did the trick and I'm pretty happy with the result. Dirt really does look like dirt, go figure. I did the same to glue in and seal some flock, and then it was time to put everything together. Some 5 minute epoxy would do the trick, but I needed something to keep everything in position till it cured. I had cut the bottom of a paper cup and made a slit down the side to act as a support, but that didn't work out. In retrospect, I have no idea how I thought that would work. In the end, I ended up propping it up with a box, which was the first thing I could reach while also supporting the island with my hand. And that, kids, is why you should never clean up. Once again, I let the epoxy sit for 24 hours before gently and carefully removing the support. Unfortunately, it didn't work out. This was when I figured out that although the chain was strong enough to hold up the piece originally, I hadn't accounted for the extra weight of the dirt and the flock. I'm a smart person, me. In an attempt to salvage the build, I took some lengths of fishing braid and glued them to the side of the island. Then stretched them out and glued them to the sides of the base to hold up the island. This is when I decided to abandon the tower idea, as the piece was clearly flawed and would not be very durable. So, mistakes were made. I like the way this piece looks, though it's definitely too flimsy to be useful in wargaming terrain. 
I'll probably scavenge the island and use it for a different piece later on. While a single change didn't work out, I'm fairly confident 3 would be more than enough to ensure its stability. Wasn't a success, but it was a good learning experience for me. If you want to watch more tabletop builds, check out this playlist right here. Also link this the live stream for the guild build, which will be held on the 25th of June. And if you want to enter yourself, details are in the description of this video. Bye!